Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to hop on here and talk about chemicals because it's something I've been recently digging into. I've been digging into it for about a year or so, but the more I learn, the more I want to share it with you guys. So looking back over the years at my transition to trying to simplify my life with minimalism, trying to really downsize the amount of waste I create in my day-to-day -day life, as well as paying attention to what I'm putting in and onto my body with the vegan lifestyle, it only seems natural that I have started learning about and paying attention to what I surround myself with in a bigger sense. I, like many people, started with my beauty products. That was an easier switch for me, cutting it out of my skincare, makeup, and those sorts of things. And I've also been making the switch to using things that are made out of glass, wood, and metal rather than plastic. Through everything I've learned, it has caused me to be a very conscious consumer. And that is something I'm very proud of and that's something that I wanna continue for the rest of my life. Today, I wanted to come in here and share some facts with you, talk about five chemicals to avoid and some other information about it. There are plenty of studies that have been done to show that people contain chemicals. We have chemicals all over us because of what we're surrounded by. And there's also been tests done on newborns to show that before they come out and are exposed to anything by themselves, they're already exposed to Kemmel's coals. So the first one is a common one I think a lot of people know about is BPA. I just kind of assumed like, okay, people are talking about it, they're taking care of it, <laughs> but that's not always the case. Let me just read the list of things that BPA is found in. So it's found in water bottles, baby bottles, reusable food containers, plastic tableware, infant feeding cups, linings of cans, jars, lids, CDs, as well as electrical and electronic equipment and dental sealants. So there's also quite a few health risks that I have jotted down that I want to share with you. A higher exposure of BPA leads to things such as reduced male sexual functions. It poses a potential cancer risk, which is always scary. I feel like we get so numb to things that cause cancer because so many things cause cancer, but the more you can do to avoid cancer causing materials, the better I think. So some things you can do to avoid it, simple things like get stainless steel bottles and glass storage containers. If plastic has that recyclable number seven on it, you can assume that there's BPA in it and avoiding canned food. Moving along to another one that I've heard of but never really knew about is phthalates. Phthalates, it's a tricky one to pronounce, phthalates. It's found in a lot of beauty products like shampoos, conditioners, body and hair sprays, perfumes, cologne, soap, nail polish, shower curtains, medical tubing, IV bags, vinyl flooring, wall coverings, food packaging and coatings on time release pharmaceuticals, so like pills and medications. There is studies that show a link between prenatal exposure and an incidences of ADD years later, as well as it being an endocrine disruptor. And there's also a link between it and male sexual development. How can we avoid it? Obviously buying things that say it's free of phthalates, but also avoid personal care products that list fragrance because companies are not forced to disclose ingredients that fall under the category of fragrance. Moving right along, we're gonna go talk about one that I had never heard about before, which is PFOA, also known as C8, I guess. It's found in things such as Teflon and other non-stick, non-stain and water repellent coatings such as cookware, waterproof breathable clothing, furniture and carpets. And the scary thing about the health risk for this one is it is found in almost everyone's blood and they have found that it causes cancer and developmental problems in lab animals. But to avoid it, you can switch to stainless steel or cast iron cookware. And if you do have nonstick cookware and you're unable to make the switch, don't overheat the cookware. Another one that I've heard about before is formaldehyde. Things like pressed wood products like particle board, plywood and that sort of stuff, as well as glue and other adhesives and durable press fabrics like drapes. So it turns out formaldehyde can cause cancer in your respiratory or gastrointestinal tract, and it also causes nausea, skin irritation, watery eyes, or burning eyes, nose, or throat. So this one is a little bit more difficult to avoid because it tells you to buy products that are free of formaldehyde or that emit it at a much slower rate, as well as keeping the humidity and the temperature low in your place with dehumidifiers and air conditioning. And the last one is flame retardants or PB. DEs. They are found in a lot of household products such as TVs, computers, wire insulation, and furniture foam. Flame retardants 
carbons accumulate in the body over time. And so it's one of those things that you don't see an instant effect. It's over years and years of exposure, causes damage to your livers, your kidney, and affects the brain and behavior in humans. So the two things that I said to avoid this are to avoid products with flame retardants in them, which I don't even know how to find things without flame retardants in them. If you think like, how are you supposed to know that your furniture doesn't have flame retardants in it? I've never seen anything advertised as flame retardant free. And the other easier one that you can do is sweep up dust. Okay guys, I know all this is so much information, a bit overwhelming, and you may be going like, what does chemicals have to do with anything, Victoria? But I think chemicals and avoiding dangerous ones is crucial to health in general. There's a number of chemicals out there that are endocrine disruptors, and that's not good for our menstrual cycles and our well-being as females. So that's the importance of it. I hope you found this video useful. If you guys have any tips or tricks down below of how you've tried to cut out chemicals in your life, please share them. I think that would be very beneficial to me and other people that are watching. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. And I've also included in my description box all of my social media information as well as my website and my links to my two different courses and my one-on-one -on -one menstrual coaching. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.